Hey everybody, welcome back to First Weekly. In fact, I'm gonna welcome you to the very last First Weekly of the year. Not only is this the last First Weekly of the year, it's the last First Weekly. As of next week, we're going to begin a new show that happens periodically from time to time, and we're gonna call it First Update. But for now, we are burying First Weekly, and we are so grateful that the Lord has allowed us to have this show that started with First Daily at the beginning of the year. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that and all things 2020 with my guest today. Starting at the very end, we've got Stephen Beasley, who leads our media communications team, is really the brainchild. He's the boy genius behind a lot of the things that you see on this screen. We have Sabrina Owens, who is in our, on our team as well. She supports uh, Joseph in our financial office, also supports Bart Walker, our church administrator, and uh, just brings a lot to our team, especially our support staff. And then you got Jeff Lovingood. What can I say? Jeff Lovingood is all things to all people. He pretty much is over all ministries and, and is a staple. He is not only the mascot at First Baptist, he's a staple here at First Baptist. Your, your family goes all the way back to the very beginning of this thing. Yes, sir. In the 1800s, my great-great-grandmother and was over there in the, near Old Dooley's Ice Cream Plant on I've downtown church. Place. Yes, used to be famous for grape ice cream. That sounds disgusting. Uncle Bill <laughs> Dooley, yes, sir. Yeah, grape ice cream. In the day. Man, that's awesome. Well, really deep roots here in Cleveland. And uh, 2020 has been a different kind of year. We're going to talk a little bit about that. This year has looked different than any other year in our history. Our church is almost 170 years old, and this has been the strangest year ever. And so let's go back to the staff retreat. Remember in January, we all went to uh, Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge, and we prayed together, and we worshiped mm -hmm. together. And man, we were on our knees at one point, begging God just to give us vision for 2020. Yep. Now, he did not tell us in that meeting that there was going to be a pandemic. <laughs> nope. uh, but what he did lead us to do was to beg God for this. And he, gave, he put this on my heart that we would ask God that our staff would have a sense of urgency this year. That was the word, urgency. And that we would do whatever it takes to be maximized for the kingdom of God and the glory of God. Now, I want you to think about what I just said. In January, our staff was on their face saying, God, with urgency, we're going to seek your plan and we want to be maximized for the kingdom of God and the glory of God no matter what. And no matter what is the part that I really want us to focus on because 2020 has been a year. I don't have to explain to you, but we've all lived it together. And so, man, Beasley, talk to me about March. Coming hot off of spring break, yep. uh, we have a meeting. The news is on in the background. Talk to me about that meeting and where it's been taking us over the last nine months. So COVID, COVID broke out basically in like a weekend's amount of time. And uh, we, there wasn't a lot of time to prepare and think through exactly what was going to happen. So we're, we're in a staff meeting on a Monday morning talking about, okay, we know we're going to make some adjustments for COVID. The pandemic's coming and it's... Nobody even really knows what that looks like yet. There weren't masks with logos on them at that point in time. No, nobody had any idea. We just knew that the shelves at Walmart were out of food, and that was just the beginning. And so, toilet paper. Um, yeah, yeah, toilet paper was a hot commodity. Yeah. And and so uh, we're in this staff meeting. We're talking about okay. We know that we've got to be able to stay in touch with each other. We need our church family to stay in touch with each other. How's that going to happen? And that's really where Pastor Jordan threw out the idea, hey, we, we're going to need to be able to do a fireside chat and, uh, and talk about, be able to talk to our people, you know, daily or often. What's that going to look like? Two hours later, we're taking over your living room. It was like E.T. I mean, the whole <laughs> crew shows up. We start unpacking and, and here we go. That was the beginning of staying in touch and making announcements and, and, and really, you know, grabbing the bull by the horns saying, yes, Lord, we know you're in this somehow. We just don't know what that looks like yet. And, and that's how it started. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I, now, I'll be honest with you. When we had that idea, I thought it was going to be a two-week thing. I thought, you know, you guys come on in. This pandemic thing mm. is going to be over in a couple of weeks. We'll get back to normal. Um, but I really feel like the Lord kind of prepared us to do that in great ways. Yeah. It's not like we just flipped a switch and we had a, a daily show. You guys have been working for a long time to prepare us for this season. Why don't you take us just on a little history journey real quick? So... Um, First Baptist has always, has always has broadcast on the radio since the 60s, really since Cleveland had a radio station. And then after 
a little further along the way, so 60s moved into 70s. In the 70s, a couple of radio stations here that First Baptist was broadcasting on, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night services, those stations split. And so one of them became US 101 in Chattanooga, big country station. It's a clear channel station. It reaches Knoxville to Huntsville. I mean, a hundred mile span of, of air. And then, uh, and then we have local, which is WCLE, Steve Hartline, Mix 1041, and all the great things they do. So in the 70s, the church ended up on a couple radio stations. We're also on AM at that point in time. And then uh, in the 90s, I think the church dabbled in TV a little bit, um, kind of with some one-off shows that happened, specials, things like that. And then when Brother Allen came back for his second tour, he said, hey, I, I want to start TV. And somebody had worked out a spot on Channel 9 in Chattanooga, which ABC, and he said, hey, you know, let's, let's put our services on TV. And so um, I was 12 years old at that point in time, and uh, a little older than that, but not much. And so that's when the church started television. So at that point, we brought lights into the worship center. We brought cameras into the worship center. We began kind of this habit of, okay, we record the message, we edit the message, we deliver the message. And so you fast forward that through now. And uh, when, the, when the pandemic hit, we had added live streaming. We're already on social media. And so all of those things were, the, the mechanisms were in place to deliver the message. So we had, we had some practice capturing. We had a great volunteer team, still have a great volunteer team. Um, we knew what the edit process looked like. Uh, we were making announcement videos and special testimony videos and things like that. And so when it came time to how do we do a Sunday morning and do that online, which happened later in the year, to how do we do special things like take over your house and make up a, a quick way to communicate, we had a little bit of equipment. We had a little bit of know-how, and everybody just jumped in and said, let's hustle. And yeah. Let's do it. God had all the pieces lined up. <laughs> Everything it's almost right. like we just had to lean that first thing, yes. and then it was just a domino effect after that. Yeah. You know, when I think about highlights of 2020, one of the things that, that we don't talk about anymore is when all of this happened, one of the first things we had the privilege of doing was to make our stage and our team available to other churches mm -hmm. in our community who yep. didn't have those mechanisms set up. Right. And man, we saw other pastors come in here and record their messages and were able to play them online for their church that was unable to meet. I remember the guy at Easter, yeah. uh, he started, he got emotional because they hadn't met in three weeks uh, and he was able to take our FM modulator that mm -hmm. we had and we get gifted him and, yep. and they were able to have a service through the radio waves in the parking lot and he mm -hmm. saw three people give their life to Christ. He said, man, thank you so much. Uh, for being a church yeah. that cares about other churches. Yeah. You know, we don't talk about those things anymore, but that was a huge thing that changed the eternity of, yeah. of three people. But, man, yeah. I'm just grateful for you and your team. Yeah. It's been pretty cool to see. That, that's one of those awesome moments, you know, where we just pull the FM transmitter out, send it, say, here we go. We have people call up and say, hey, I've never, I've never done a Facebook Live before. How do you do that? And I'm on the phone going, okay, see that button on the bottom right-hand side of your screen? Press the Live button and make sure you're smiling because you're, you're going out to all your friends, you know. Yeah, that's right. Um, you yeah. know, and with that, Beasley, we also had Shepherds and Shepherds going on at the same time. That's right. And we had been meeting in person, and that was a time where we were meeting with our pastors going through Shepherds and Shepherds, 12 of them, and we're all trying to figure out ministry together online. Yeah. And so we're not just helping, you know, other churches by letting them come record here, but meeting with them weekly to talk about ministry uh, in a different way uh, where they are. Yeah, that's right. A lot of the conversation that came up was about the response side or the online giving side. You know, churches were passing the plate. We were shaking hands for welcomes. It sure. was we're passing out paper bulletins, things like that. And when you can't do those things in a week's time, what do you do? And so, and I remember, you know, sitting on a on a like an exercise ball in Bart's office talking to a church in Sparta about, you know, how do you do online giving? Like, where do you go? Is that PayPal? You know, how does that work? And so. There's been a lot of good technology things that have happened just over the course of time. Mm -hmm. And I think our whole country is just much more technologically savvy 10 months later. Yeah. yeah. Um, no you know, our kids know how to Zoom now, right? I mean, that's... <laughs> I didn't know what Zoom was 12 months ago. <laughs> I mean, Sabrina, what were some of the highlights of 2020 for you personally? Personally, uh, working here and I think it really helped me with First Impressions, being a part of First Impressions here at the church, it's given us opportunity to do better yeah. at what we were doing uh, with the greeting and the volunteers and just amping it up a little bit, um, getting the temp checks, the sanitation team. We've had the best volunteers yeah. as far as people being outside every week and helping out, and that's been awesome to see. Um, personally, uh, just 
being together with our family, you know, and just um, the kids hated being home, though. So, I mean, yeah. us being out, they would much rather do that. But I don't know, just everything at the church has been awesome to watch and just be a part of. And it's just been fun. The sanitation team, that's hilarious because we didn't have one of those. We've ne- Nobody's ever had a sanitation team as a church. But, yeah. but you do what you have to do. And it's yeah. been cool to see how the church has responded. When the world says you can't, our church has always said we can if the Lord allows us to do this and this and this. And so it's just uh, this desire to move forward no matter what and maximize this moment for the glory of God. You know, some of my other highlights that we've really forgotten about in a lot of ways. You remember on it was Easter when the tornado hit our town. Oh, yeah. So we're right in the middle of a coronavirus pandemic. And now we are also suffering. Our city is suffering because of the the damage and destruction that happened through the tornadoes. And we as a church had the privilege of, of partnering with some, some local businesses and local organizations and really blessing uh, a couple of people in, in a community. You want to talk about that a yeah, little bit? Yeah, you know, Pastor, you were thinking about thinking about that. You have We were feeding first responders, too, mm-hmm. at that same time. Then the tornado hit, so we were feeding, feeding you know, the fire department, the police department, the health care folks, the hospitals. And then all of a sudden the tornado hits. Yeah. And so we just redirected that those efforts to the community where the tornado hit and mm-hmm. tried to minister to the needs of those folks. Yeah. It's kind of like looking for the needs where God is working and how can we join him there mm-hmm. and help those folks out. And, and so it was neat to see, one, how we were feeding and taking care of those first responders when, when COVID first hit. Then the tornado hit, we redirected those those that ministry and started helping folks, ministering, serving, food, clothing. We did the trailer yeah. uh, there and helped the guy out there with the trailer. And so it was neat to see the involvement of our church mm-hmm. and our staff through this whole process of looking, being sensitive to where God's working, mm-hmm. and go join him there in ministry. You know, that's the cool thing. And Sabrina, you work in our business office, and so you've seen the faithfulness of our church. Yeah through a pandemic. I mean, the giving has been unbelievable. And that's really allowed us to add ministry, not to back up or retreat, mm-hmm. but to lean into needs that we see in our community. Yeah. I mean, what have, what have you seen as far as the faithfulness of our church and what does that mean to you? I just, when I think of this year, the word that pops in my head is opportunity. I feel like we've had a lot of opportunities to grow and a lot of opportunities to enhance what we've already had. Um, I mean, we are able to give online now. We have, people have been mailing in everything, um, but online's been the biggest thing. And then just, uh, you know, with all the opportunities that we've given them to be able to give, and people are not stepping back, but it's like they're pushing forward because they they just want, they see that this isn't it, Mm -hmm. you know, and that there is more. And I don't know, just it's been awesome to watch and just, People have been faithful during this time, and that's what we need to be. I think online giving is an incredible blessing for a Christian. Let me Mm -hmm. tell you why. This is the way I do it. I'm not saying everybody should do it, but you really should. Um, The tithe was never supposed to be a question of if you give it or not. It was never supposed to be a question. It was the first thing you do. It's automatic. It's not, uh, does God deserve it this month or not? It was automatic faithfulness in Mm -hmm. biblical times. I believe it ought to be automatic faithfulness in our times. And so for our family, man, when that comes out first thing of the month, we tithe right off the bat, and I don't even have to think about it. I know Mm -hmm. that I've done what God's asked me to do. But in doing that, giving your tithe up front electronically, it allows me to position my heart Mm -hmm. in a different way. Now I come to church or I... I live in a community where I'm looking to give offerings. Mm -hmm. And the offering is always supposed to be above and beyond your tithe. So tithe, automatic faithfulness in my family. But the Lord still blessed me with more. And so now I'm I'm looking for ways to be a blessing Mm -hmm. and to demonstrate my generosity by giving to things that I believe honor the Lord or point people to Jesus. And so that's why I I think I think this pandemic is going to help a lot of people that are now living out automatic faithfulness by giving online, and now they're in a position to give above and beyond, just like it's demonstrated throughout the Bible. And so that's just a little plug for online giving. You guys can go to our website (laughs) to find out more about that, okay? We'll put the link at the bottom (laughs) of the screen. I think about other highlights. This summer was a big highlight for for me, just evaluating how God used our church to adapt and continue ministry 
when everybody else was saying ministry's got to shut down. When they said VBS, you can't do it. When they said camp, you can't do it. Our teams, especially our age group ministries, really came together, prayed, sought the Lord, and came up with some alternative plans. Talk about well, that. you know, we changed the dates uh, regularly because everything was so fluid because we were trying to figure it out, trying to figure vacation Bible school out, trying to figure camps out, middle school camp, high school camp, uh, kids camp. And, uh, and so our age group ministers, whether it be Sharon uh, Wallace, when she drove her, the bicycles around the community mm -hmm. and spent time with our preschoolers as they were outside waving at her, just those touches, those high touches with the preschool ministry. And then PJ saying, hey, you know, we're not going to do vacation Bible school. At the, we can't do vacation Bible school like we usually do it. So we put it at the back end of the summer and did it outside and had a stage and and it really had a huge emphasis. Then he had those bicycle rides with parents and kids outside where they could bring their bikes and they could ride around together and have a service. And so we just looked at different ways to do ministry in preschool and children. In high school and middle school, we had a, a stage and a service that we took on the road, if you will, in our community. It was a tour, man. In a, yeah, it's a four, two, three tour. Yeah. In neighborhoods and, and uh, at the lake. And we just shared the gospel, had a, a festival atmosphere yeah. type thing, and energy, music, worship, uh, fun, and somebody sharing the gospel. And we saw a ton of students and children give their heart to Christ. And nothing neat was a, we just stopped baptizing folks. We put the mm -hmm. baptistry in the commons yeah. and uh, it made a way when people pray to receive Christ, they could come and get baptized uh, anytime during the week yeah. with her family and friends and Beasley's team did a great job with videos and put those on first daily and, and showed them on our Sunday service where people see and could see life change. Yeah. Man, that was the cool thing. And you said it well, you know, back in March, we're not going to take a snow day. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> leaned into ministry and we just had to figure out, okay, how are we going to do ministry with people closer to where they are since we're Socially separated at the moment. Yeah. Right. I mean, that 423 tour pulled up in my driveway one particular <laughs> night, and man, all the neighbors knew. We were part of First Baptist, and we love middle school kids, right. and that was great. And, you know, it was a little loud, and it was fun. You know, we had a great time. And, well, it sent a message. It was our community was yeah. involved in that. Uh -huh. Yes. And I think about, like, probably my highlight for the year is the three guys that drove over an hour. It's probably like in April. Drove over an hour to be baptized. And right. so, you know, we had tried to figure right. out, okay, how, how do we, how do we get the, the message out there? And we had a little practice doing that, but how do we, how do we do the response? And so we implement the text message thing. And then like a month later, people are, you know, they're texting every Sunday, but a month later, and you know, we're baptizing somebody that on Sunday texts in saved, your dad counsels them. Yeah. And then they drive an hour to get, I mean, you're talking Dayton, Knoxville. I, I don't, the other one I think was like somewhere in Georgia. I mean, so they come here at the same time. Mm -hmm. They're being baptized. Dude, it was cool. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was Who neat. Who ever yeah. thought? I, I'll never forget. I, you know, my dad did receive all the text messages. Yeah, that's a bunch of them. Personally <laughs> followed up with everybody that texted in saying, I just gave my life to Jesus. He, he texted me one Sunday afternoon and said, hey, just want to encourage you. So far, we've seen people give their life to Jesus on five continents. It's and crazy. I've personally talked yeah. to every one of them and their legit decisions. Yeah. And then, you know, through the extended family now... Yeah. Yep. Uh, we're able to stay connected with them mm -hmm. and we're leading them through new believers classes online and we're partnering them with people in our church that are now discipling them virtually. Yeah. Uh, you know, we saw Trisha Harper drive overnight exactly. from Pennsylvania to get baptized here. Crazy. We've seen yep. people giving from around the world and now our business office is trying to figure out how to take <laughs> British pounds and get them converted into U.S. dollars. And who would have ever thought, man, but that's yeah. the year 2020 has been. It's mm -hmm. been the year that none of us saw coming. Mm -hmm. It's you know? broadened our perspective so much in terms of how we can do ministry. And, and there's a lot of great ministries happening already, but there's so much more. You think, okay, well, now we can do Zoom Bible studies. Now we can right. stay connected with people that physically it's a lot harder to get together. But, man, I, we can FaceTime, we can Zoom, we can, you know. Mm -hmm. More people can be involved in that. I mean, it's it's been neat all the way around. Just, I mean, it's more convenient to tithe now. You are you can be updated faster because we'll send you a text message real quick and say, hey, this is what our weekend schedule looks like. Or, hey, you can be praying about this just on your phone. I mean, the church gathered, in a sense, we're gathered all the time mm -hmm. because we're so digitally connected. It's been a wonderful thing. Um, and I, 
you know, you could get glimpses of this before 2020 of, man, it'd be really cool if we all decided to do this or if we all got behind that. But this has connected us in a way that we might not have ever been connected before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's allowed us to reach the world. Yeah. It's been, it's this been, made us look at future different. Yes. 2021, yeah. 2022 yeah. is... Oh, man. This made us look at, hey, how are we going to do ministry in the future? Mm-hmm. It's caused us... I think it's like you said a while ago, we've been more aware of technology now it's caused us to do that yeah and it's made us different i think in the future that's right i'm more excited about 2021 than ever just because i'm thinking okay we, we figured out some new things there's so much i want to do i mean there we've got a lot of stories to tell there's new technology i mean you know we're just in a lot of ways we're just getting started with with a whole different way of doing ministry. I think everybody's ready for 2021. <laughs> for a lot they're just of ready for 2020. Hey, you know? Yes. But you know what? It's just proof, man, that Romans 8, 28 is, is legit. You know, it's real. That, that God just has a way of taking the bad and making it good. Mm. He's pulled so much good out of such a bad year. Mm. And here we are at the end of the year looking back and we're like, wow. Did God really accomplish? Did God really accomplish all of that mm-hmm. in the midst of so many troubles and so many trials? Absolutely. You know, it makes me. I, I'm glad to be a part of a church that God is using and God is blessing. Yep. So, Brian, talk about that. I mean, not just as a staff person, as a church member. You know, what does it mean to you to be a part of a church that is seeing all the God things happening? It really means a lot to me that everything that we've done, because I think about my my family, my kids. They still had things that they could be involved in during all of this or my nephews and my nieces that don't even go here who they've had opportunities to be able to go and do something and still hear the word and it's just we've never stopped my parents were listening people just extended family were listening and just watching everything that the church has done and all the ministries and stuff it's just it's mind-blowing to me actually when you just think about everything we have done this year because we didn't stop like 2020 did not make us stop it actually we had more urgency because we had to start thinking outside the box and um i just think as a member here it's just you appreciate i mean being home for what what was it 26 weeks that's it and then coming back i mean i thought i was about to i mean we came back with a shirt but you came up with that better together shirt (laughs) yeah i mean it was you just were ready to be back in the house. I mean, you can have church at home too, but there's something about being in the building together and worshiping together. And just, I appreciate that we just did not stop. We just thought outside the box and we just kept on going and it's touched different people in my family that maybe it would not have touched them if this would not have happened. Yeah. So. You know what else I'm proud of? I'm proud that our team didn't leave the senior adults behind. Yeah, right. You know, a, a lot of churches that I've spoken with, they, they did the technology thing, they're streaming online, but they really never even thought about people who were not online. Mm-hmm. And yet our team and our volunteers have done such a great job of keeping in touch with them. People made like those calls. Mother, yes, you know? my mother. Uh, the ladies in the uh, at the reception area there, uh, Jane and Terry and a lot of those ladies, made calls every day to, to the roles, the senior adult roles, and checked up on ladies, yeah. checked up on people, checked up, checked up on senior adults. And I think that's that verbal connection, yeah. that leaning into people in ministry, mm-hmm. because that's what ministry is about. It's about the Lord working in people's heart. And yeah. uh, we got to lean into people as we lean into the Lord. And I'm proud of our staff, uh, Jim Gibson and Rusty and those ladies, those Sunday school group leaders, mm-hmm. I did a great job with that yeah. and continue to do so. Well, and it also allowed us to pray specifically for our, our people. Mm-hmm. You know, I love getting those reports and finding out that these people have these needs and these people are struggling with this and these people are sick. And we've seen our church rally around each other, which is right. great. Man, whenever you start to see the sheep also taking care of the sheep, right? it takes a little bit off, a little pressure off the shepherds as right. well. You know, right. it's like, wow, these people really get the gospel. They get what it is to live out their faith. Well, we talked it. about that this year is developing people. Mm-hmm. That's equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. And you know what? It's neat to watch the saints do the work of the ministry. And we saw that. Yeah. And we're continuing to see it as they lean into each other and share and talk and call and support each other. You know who else I'm proud of? I'm proud of our deacons. Oh, man. It's been a great year for our deacons. You say, man, it's been... I haven't seen them passing the plates. They haven't been deking, right? <laughs> what have they been doing? You know, but but the truth is, these are this is a group of men that they're servant leaders in our church. And 
Uh, the pandemic didn't stop us from doing the, the single mom and widow's car wash this year. They right. did it, man. They were out there with masks on, praying for these ladies, washing their cars, serving them. They were partnering with Mission 423, delivering turkeys at Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and blessing families that otherwise may not have a meal to right. eat uh, right. for Thanksgiving. Um, and just this past week, they personally delivered uh, a poinsettia from me and the rest of our church uh, just to let our shut-ins, our homebound members, know that we care about them and we love mm -hmm. them. And we've delivered hundreds of poinsettias to people who are unable to come to church because of, of their age or because of their stage. And so um, those deacons, they have a heart for the Lord. They love this church. They represent us so well. I'm just proud that a pandemic didn't stop our deacons mm -hmm. from serving well this year. Mm -hmm. What else sticks out, man? You think about great highlight moments of 2020. We'll hit a couple more, then we'll land this plane. Beasley? I mean, man, we didn't stop. We uh, <laughs> we kept going and going. I think about, you know, Sharon and PJ putting out videos every week mm -hmm. for, for groups. And so we, we'd see... You see pictures on social media of families watching a service or, or kids doing the virtual VBS motions and, and those kind of things. You know, that, uh, PJ and Sharon just finished a Christmas. There's a packet you can pick up here right now, and, uh, and it's kind of got a Christmas story in it. And then there's a video that goes along with it. That's all on our app. Um, so there's a lot of good content out there. You know, there's been, there's been a lot of, of normal things just continue. Um, you know, think about like the phase two conversation. You know, we didn't we didn't stop or pause or anything. We we kept right on going with phase two, working on that project, knowing that there'd be a day we'd gather together. We tweaked it a little bit, thinking about, hey, how do we stay connected? I mean, there's there's a lot of good highlights there. Um, this whole year has has been very special uh, because we're hearing a lot of stories. I, I feel more connected than I ever have. You think about all these first dailies. Mm -hmm. We got to hear about all these ministries in our town. Yeah. That mm -hmm. People have a heart for a need. They have a burden. God's given them a gift to, to meet a need or serve or to rally people around the least of these or the people that are hurt or wounded or what, you know, there's so much ministry. God's up to a lot of things in our town. Um, I think about Christian leaders that have been a part of first daily. You get to hear the, how faith influences every decision they make. And uh, and that's really encouraging to me as a believer to just know that there's you can trust leadership to act with the Lord in mind, mm -hmm. and and that's been really special. Yeah. It's um, been fun to see the churches come together as well. Yeah, if you remember, right before the tornadoes hit, the Lord led us to to host a prayer gathering on this mm -hmm. stage mm -hmm. where we invited 14 area pastors to come together and just to pray for our city and to pray for our country mm -hmm. and to pray for our leadership. And then just weeks later, Easter weekend, you know, the tornado hit and mm -hmm. you look up and all those guys are now with chainsaws yeah. serving our community and passing out food yep. to the community. And the Lord brought us together, I believe, for that moment. Mm -hmm. And then once again, we got together and uh, invited even more pastors and worship mm -hmm. leaders to come to this stage. And we hosted a second uh, yeah. citywide prayer gathering yeah. that the Lord used to prepare us for a different part of the season. You mm -hmm. know, and at that point, it was we're praying for our country. We have an upcoming election. We've got all these things kind of mm -hmm. hanging in the balance. We've got a lot of people that are asking questions and worried and anxious. Right. And yet the Lord brought those churches and pastors and ministries together uh, mm -hmm. to rally around the gospel and the hope we have in Jesus. And uh, mm -hmm. just another highlight for me, you know, outside of tragedy, I don't know if that would happen mm -hmm. outside right. of, you know, what what um, what we've walked through this year with all the uncertainties. I don't know if the Lord's going to bring all those churches under one roof or all of them gathering at clevelandpraise.com, but He did. Mm -hmm. And we saw thousands of lives impacted and encouraged as a result of that broadcast. Mm -hmm. I don't know, other highlights that jump out to you guys, things that you're grateful for for this past year. Sabrina? Well, I'm kind of touching on what Stephen said, but just for my kids, I mean, like I said, they are not ones that like to stay home, but while we were home, VBS. I mean, we had our T-shirts on. We had the construction hats on. We were watching the videos. Don't you we're... feel a little weird doing that, though? I did. <laughs> I did. Uh, yeah, I understand. <laughs> but, I mean, we did it. So, just all in. Yeah, but, I mean, they were dancing. They were having fun. I mean, they just came up with so many different ideas to still allow the kids to uh, just get their praise on, you know, yeah. while we weren't in uh, in the building. So, um, also, like you were saying, with the cakes that they're doing right now to celebrate Jesus, the some of the kids were like, they even gave us pans. It was like, they're just thinking of everything 
that can allow them to still stay plugged in. Mm -hmm. And so I really appreciate that as a parent, yeah. how much they've really thought outside the box to allow them to still be engaged. You know what I think those 26 weeks of virtual worship is going to end up doing? I think that season, in some weird way, has taught the next generation that the church is not a place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people grow up saying, you know, we go to church on Sunday. That 26 weeks, when you can't go to church, yeah. it's a reminder that you are the church. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that we church isn't a place we go. It's a person that we are. It's a relationship that we have. And so in a lot of ways, like you said, when, you, when you're at home getting your praise on, mm -hmm. it's a reminder that, man, we are living sacrifices. Our bodies you know, are in relationship with Jesus. And no matter where we go, we are the church. If we're at work, if we're at school, if we're at home watching a screen, like we are worshipers. Mm -hmm. That's who God made us to be. And uh, man, in some weird way, I think that that's going to be a plus, not a minus mm -hmm. in the hearts and lives of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Love and good. Last word, man. When you think about 2020, what are you thankful for? And when you think about 2021, what are you excited about? Uh, what I think about is Rachel and I, driving to Lee University. Rachel and I try to walk in the evenings to break things down. She has to get me straight in the afternoons on a good walk. Amen. And I was driving by Pelican's Snowball, which I like, but haven't liked lately. But with that, there was a group of people marching up to the, uh, the downtown park. And there was Frank Walker and his wife. Uh. And he, God laid him on my heart and called him the next morning and Say, I want you to come meet with our staff and talk to you with them about unity. And he came to talk to our staff and he laid on our heart and ended up working it all out. He comes to be a part of our staff in charge of across the streets ministry and all of what he's doing, his family's doing really yeah. in our community with the 423 missions. Uh, it's just unbelievable what yeah. God's doing through him. And our staff, our deacons, those type of things down at Galt Street right now. And I think also about Justin Warden, mm. him coming the week before COVID mm. to be our, our high school pastor. Him and Summer, they've done so well about meeting folks and in an interesting way, impacting our community and meeting people through the toughest times. Yeah. But leaning into people and loving folks yeah. in, in a neat way. So I think about our staff, Michael Head, and Evan, those guys, and it's just neat, the team yeah. that God is assembling here is real special. Mm -hmm. And I think they have something very unique about all of them. And I think they all have got great people skills and they love the Lord. Yeah. And uh, so I'm excited about them, excited about 2021, what God's going to do through them. Yeah. I think God's assembling a team right now that's pretty special. That they are great commission people. Yeah. They want to see and reach people for the cause of Christ and make disciples, whether it be in Jerusalem or around the world. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're about. That's our uh, marching orders, if you will. And 2021, that's our marching orders. It might look a little different. Who knows? But we'll stay with uh, that strategy because God gave it to us years ago in, uh, in Scripture. That's so right. let's go for it. Great Commission wasn't a suggestion. That's right. So let's go. That's, that's right. great. Well, that's what it's all about, man. 2021 is going to be a great year. It's going to be a year we don't know what the Lord has in store. Uh, I can tell you that I'm excited that we're going to be breaking ground on phase two and look forward to seeing how the Lord's going to use that new facility um, just to position our church to maximize this location for decades to come. I really think that God's going to use that in massive ways. Uh, and I'm also really excited just to see how... Um, God is going to continue to develop us as individuals. Once again, the church is not a place, it's us as a people. And so as God continues to work on us and teach us new things, like you just said, man, we, we feel more prepared now because God's allowed us to be exposed to so many things this year. We're prepared for next year in some weird way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, man, my prayer is that we'll continue to come out of this pandemic season uh, and be reminded that God called us to do life together. Uh, we're better together, mm -hmm. and uh, it's more than a T-shirt. I mean, it is it is a, a mantra around here, and that is God called us to do life together. Uh, and and I truly believe that this year we're hoping and praying that we have a lot more uh, collaboration, a whole lot less isolation. Yeah. <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah. And uh, man, if you haven't come back yet, 
Uh, I encourage you to pray about that. If you're in the vulnerable population, I totally understand. But man, this is a special place. And what God is doing here on the weekends is very, very special. And so uh, when the Lord gives you the green light, man, don't hesitate, but come back uh, because there is nothing better than being in the room. Like Sabrina said just a second ago, there's something special about being in the room. Mm-hmm. If you're not ready for that, totally cool. That's why we do this every single weekend. I encourage you to stay connected to what's happening here. Right now we're at two services at 9 and 11. You can also watch those services online on television. You can listen on radio. Uh, you can find it on the app. You can find it on our website. Um, but however you connect with us, I encourage you to continue doing that. Be faithful in your giving like you, so many of you have. Uh, remember, we want to do more and give more than we've ever given before. Last year was an unbelievable year. Uh, nearly $3 million given towards generations in cash this past year. And yet we are just getting started. And I'm really excited about what God's going to do in the next 12 months. This has been an awesome show. And before I wrap this one up, I do want to thank some people that you can't see right now. Mm. You can't see them because they're behind cameras. They're in control rooms. They're pushing buttons. They don't want to be on this stage. And that's okay. (laughs) Listen, God makes us all different. And there's some people behind the scenes who are geniuses who have allowed you to connect with us and stay connected through First Daily, First Weekly, and will continue to be connecting with us through First Update in the days to come. But if if you want to be an encouragement, shoot this guy an email at Stephen Beasley, uh, S. Beasley at firstbaptistcleveland.com, and he will be happy to forward it to his team. But their team has been incredible Mm -hmm. this year. And so be a blessing to those who've blessed you, encourage those who have encouraged you, and continue just to be the person that God created you to be. Be maximized in this season for the glory of God. And go into this next year with a sense of urgency, saying no matter what it takes, we're going to glorify Him. God bless you guys. Have a great day. You know, when you think about other tragic seasons in America and really tragic seasons that we've lived through, seasons like 9-11, in those days... People were flocking to the church. People were running to the church. But this season is completely different. And therefore, I believe the answer to that question has to be different. And so maybe the answer to the question is, since people aren't running to the church, maybe the church needs to run to the people. And one way that we want to do that over the next couple of days, couple of weeks, who knows how long, is to have a daily show which you're watching the first episode of right now. And I pray that this daily show is something that'll be an encouragement to you, an encouragement to your spiritual life, an encouragement to your family. I pray that we'll have families gathered around TV screens and, and phones and monitors watching this and encouraged by this every single day. Wherever this video finds you, our, our hope is to be an encouragement to you to remind you that God is still on His throne, still worthy of our praise and worthy of our worship. So we're going to sing together. I encourage you to sing, to reflect, to sit. Let's allow the Lord to minister to us even as we pour out His praise. Let's sing together the life He gives us. You give light. You are
that he's given us breath to breathe. Let's worship him in the midst of it. See all the earth. trust in you. And it's in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen.